That was working better in pre-production. Ladies and gentlemen, Duke Moonwalker, Mr. Mitch Pollock. Come on up. Have a seat. Our next character, of course, needs no introduction for Chicago. Chicago's own WGN, Mr. Jeff Hoover, also known as Professor Plotnik. And I tell you, the woman who holds back time and is still gorgeous, Mary Carrie Hotchkins, also known as Sonia Blade, but also in ours, Empress Anoya. <laughs> and we have our Captain Cayenne, Miss Clementine Melfoot. And I'd also like to bring up Jack Hager. Where's Jack? Whose who's crazy, yany, zany world of uh, thoughts. Where are you, Jack? Come on, get up here. <laughs> Jack Hager. We won't give you a chair, Jack. All right, we got people handing out ice cream. So we're going to talk a little bit about what came into the brains of, uh, well, no, they can't do that. I, I mean, if I was trying to psychoanalyze uh, Dennis Nordman, I'd be here for a month and a half. Um, and if I was trying to figure out Paul Reno, that would be also another month and a half. But I'd like the two of them to stand up because this was their brainchild. I know you just sat down, Paul, but let's get you back up anyway. A round of applause for Dennis and Jack and, uh, and Paul. And I can't forget one other guy. This game came together in such a beautiful form with artwork because of a man that I like and as a friend, there's only one person, the great Christopher Franchi. Chris, stand up here, please. There we go. So what I wanted to do tonight is have some ice cream Talk about saving the world with uh, this, this cast of characters. And I have to say, this is a, a, a group, great group. I kind of uh, had an emotional moment earlier tonight when we were having dinner, and I said to the entire team, and unfortunately, um, Jeff and Kerry missed it, but I said to them, we created history here, folks. We, we really went all out, and it was such a beautiful piece. I know Clementine has been just loving looking at all the artwork that has come out from Chris on this game. And uh, Carrie, stunning as she always has a Sonya Blade, but also as the great um, Empress Anoya. And then, of course, the, tying it all together with the zany antics of Jeff Hoover is just one of those great moments, too. So I am so happy. And let's not forget the star, the stud of the show, Mitch Pollack. So. All right, so what we wanted to do here is kind of keep it, have some ice cream, talk about the game, talk about a little bit more, and uh, talk about Jack and the craziness that we put this together. And I wanted to just start, kind of keep this, while everybody's eating ice cream and just enjoying themselves, they probably don't remember much of what this seminar is going to be about, but that's okay. We're just going to have some fun up here. So let's, let's get it right into it. So I wanted to ask the cast, what was it like when you got a phone call from, from uh, Mr. Jack Hager who said, I want you to be in another game? So, uh, or in a game. Let's start with uh, uh, Clementine. Oh my goodness. The mic's right in front of you. It was a very, uh, I'll take it, give me some. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a crime if I said no. Absolutely. Um, it, was, it was a very surreal experience. Um, him, I got a, a fresh, very uh, conspicuous email from Jack Hager um, inviting me to be a part of this, this game to send an audition. Um, 
at first I thought it was a little sketchy, I'm going to be honest, getting emails from somebody I'm not aware of. Um, but I, I have a past of, of cosplay and, and dressing up as my favorite characters and things like that. Um, and he found me. Um, cosplaying was my, one of my favorite characters. Um, but it was a very, very fortunate experience. It was something I had an absolutely no idea what I was doing, what to expect. So this is a, an absolute experience for me and I'm so so fortunate that you guys all all enjoy this so but it was very surreal and yeah. Carrie for me it was a little different. I got a phone call and it was Jack on the other line. I'm like, Jack, how are you? It's been so long. <laughs> and it was I mean I love talking to Jack. I love working with him. Uh, we worked with um NBA Jam and then Revolution X and um, so we've really gotten to know each other through the years, and we kept in touch through Facebook and all that. And so I was really more excited to work with Jack again for any game. He could have said it. It was, you know, some stupid guy I never heard of or whatever. But I would have done anything for you because you are, you know, the reason I'm here right now. And I'm so grateful for everything you've done for me. Hello, Jack. Hello? Okay. Um, I turned down Professor Plotnick probably three or four times because <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm, I'm a movie in a pinball machine? Like, what? I don't get it. Like, but uh, anyway, I did research on him, and he had done research on me because I used to be a producer for, uh, I don't know if anybody's from Chicago here or not, but uh, Jonathan Brandmeier, Johnny B, I produced his show and did voices and uh, did skits and stuff. And he had listened to Johnny B, so he knew me way back from those days and then continued to see me on WGN Morning News on Channel 9 here in Chicago as a producer. So I didn't think it was weird that he was reaching out to me, but I, I just thought the concept of a movie and a pinball machine, people want to play the game, but he explained to me, hey, you know, they're not really long clips, and at some point, if you want to fast forward through the game and just play the game without all that, you can, but people are going to want to watch this movie. It's going to be kind of fun, and it's this whole 60s theme, so I like Bat. It reminded me of the Batman, Adam West, yeah. kind of the, the lines and the, and the attitude and the approach to it. It's also Flash Gordon, obviously, because of the yeah. the... I got that concept, but the the humor is really to me like almost that Adam West. If I only had my shark repellent on me, you know, it had that kind of sense of humor to it. And I, I finally, I just said, you know, this guy's as crazy as me. So I got, <laughs> I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. So it, it, we shot it like over a year ago. So the fact that it's yeah. been out now and been received well, I think, I, it's so exciting to think that. All this stuff we did in front of a green screen looks so great and, um, and ha holds up to that theme and that idea that you had. So thank you. It's actually, it's funny that you said that you turned down Plotnik a couple times, because I actually, I turned it down four times. Oh. I turned down my role <laughs> four times. I think that's actually one more time than you, than you turn yours down, if I'm remembering. Uh, it's just crazy. <laughs> uh, just kidding. No, I, I, I accepted it uh, right out of the gates, because I really, honestly, I needed the money. Um, <laughs> um, no, I actually, I actually wasn't much of an actor before, um, before Jack came into my life. Um, <laughs> I actually, my no, still not. No, I'm. I'm <laughs> <really good. And laughs> Don't hold that again. Talk to <laughs> <you>. <laughs> uh, no, actually, uh, it was kind of a like a coincidence how I became part of this uh, part of this thing. Uh, my roommate Jessica, stand up, Jessica. Doesn't want to stand up, but trust me, Jessica. she's great. <laughs> Jessica, you don't want come on, stand up. Uh, That's right. Uh, yeah, get out. <laughs> for, for some of you who don't know, Jessica is also the video um, animator for us here at American Pinball, so she worked on all the backdrops and the back screens for you guys. So, 
But she said, Mitch is the perfect guy for this. Those were her exact <laughs> words. That was a direct <laughs> quote. Um, but yeah, she uh, she kind of like pushed me forward to Jack, and then I sent an audition tape, and they 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 chose me, uh, and uh, it uh, honestly it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Uh, I wasn't. I was miscast. <laughs> um, but no, honestly, it was. I just I, I sent in an audition, and they they wanted me, and it, I just it just kind of grew from there. So this is this is kind of a new world for me, but I'm super excited to be here, and uh, this is this is great. This is, you guys are awesome. Hey, Jack, do you, you, you remember? Um, I, I, I just want to say one, uh, one ahead, fun detail before we go on. I don't know if it was mentioned yet. Uh, this is, uh, I, people who know me know I'm an emotional guy anyway, so and I, there's plenty of reasons for it. But, but uh, tonight, th this is like my, the hair on the back of my neck. This is the first time, <laughs> it's like an Avengers cast. This is the first time my superheroes are assembled all in the same room. So let's, let's hear it for them. Just, let's, they, you know, like they said, and I think you all, you know, we can all remember back to the, to the mask days of 2021 and, and that's when this game started. And I was directing them with a mask on and, and my programming counterpart at the time, Josh Kugler was in the room and, and, and Jessica was handling the camera and the three of us uh, just said, all right, let's make this happen. And uh, from the start, it, it couldn't have been better. Um, and I was just talking to these guys out back. I hope we weren't laughing too loud because we were reminiscing backstage. But each person perfectly embodies the character that I hoped they would. And uh, um, Mitch was supposed to, I, I know this is a stretch, but he was supposed to be sort of an a overly confident buffoon. And I know you wouldn't get that from I was playing out of type. It was hard. But just magnificent. And then Jeff was supposed to be this, this mad, obsessive Christ, uh, Christ ice cream. <laughs> no, that, uh, this is Freudian slip there. Ice, ice cream explorer in outer space. And it, it was like it was like, you, like an ice cream explorer in space. <laughs> and, and, and it you was lived like, in Chicago too long. What does that mean, Jeff? <laughs> and it was like... He, he had, I had props laid out, and he put on this fez, and it was like the magic fez, and he became Professor Plotnik right then and there. Um, Carrie had never really been booked to do an evil character, which blows my mind. And, 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 and I, right. <laughs> well, well, not, well in, not in real life, and uh, perhaps family <laughs> members can attest to that. Okay. And, but but uh, I said, I want you to play this evil uh, princess, and she got it immediately and, and just fulfilled the role and exceeded all of our expectations. Um, and then uh, Clementine, really, it, it was instant. Uh, and I know this sounds weird and everything, and people who know me know how weird that is. But, but I was looking at C2E2 videos because that's all we could do at that time. Even actors, you couldn't get them because everybody was locked down in COVID. And I saw a, a C2E2 video of, of Clementine from her previous year, and she was all in blue, blue hair, yep. and her smile radiated. And I, and I kid you not. And it was just like, oh my God, that's Captain Cayenne. I, had, I thought she was from Chicago. Turns out she's from Seattle. So I had to... <laughs> Thanks, so, so I had to jump over some hoops there that way. Then the, the one other thing I do want to say before we go on, the, so the first time uh, Clementine and, and uh, Carrie were working together, we had our costumer in, who I was so fortunate to hire. She was from Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas, so not too shabby. And she built their costumes that day on their bodies. Like, okay, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna do this and, and, and it, like perfectly designed. And when the two of them came out, we, they knew basically who they were, but we had to do some team stuff. So they stood back to back. And it was the line that was like, no, be on my team. No, press the left button to be on my team. No, be on my team. And then stop, and then they turn, and, they, and it heats up, heats up, right? And then at the end, they decide, all right, um, we'll agree to be friends. And they shake hands, and without even thinking, Clementine turns around and she and you see she wipes her hand on her hip <laughs> and then Carrie saw it and it was like they were in character from that moment it was just it was just natural so anyway that, that's I kind of wanted to give you a little bit of that history but 
Um, I, again, I can't thank you guys. For the record, my costume was not cut to my body. <laughs> I just want that to be known. All you writers and bloggers, please note that my costume was... We just got it off the rack. <laughs> and his audition tape was made in the nude. So put that in your blog. Well, no, I, got, I, I got dressed later, but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jack always yeah. shot in the nude, and then they, we you told him to put his clothes back on. They can't adjust the heat at that office. I tell you, it's terrible. And, and, and let me tell you, we put this studio together at American, but we had marble floors. So we try to quiet the noise down in the echo chamber, and I, I have to give kudos to Matt. Um, I'm going to goof up Matt's name now. Gern, thank you, because he really went through and cleaned up all that audio and took out that echo and that verb from all those uh, Italian marble floors we had down there. Um, but I will just put this out. Jack fought for all these characters. He, he immediately said, Natalie is, uh, Natalie, or I'm sorry, Clementine is the one. <laughs> sorry, Jack. No, no, it's funny. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He, he basically, he showed me all their demo reels, and he basically said, well, Mitch has got a pulse, so we'll use him, and, uh, no, I'm just kidding, Mitch, we, we don't, yeah, you were, you were good. No, these were, these were great, these were great clips, and you know what, like he said, their magic started. So what I want to talk about is, is there some, some significant thing that happened during the filming that you guys want to share with the crew here at that Expo, and then I'm going to open it up for them to ask some questions, so... Do you, anybody want to share anything? Yeah. Mitch? Got one? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, ice cream is a, is a huge, huge player in this thing. You guys are all enjoying your ice cream. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, I, was, want I, more I was enjoying a lot on the set. Um, there, there's, there's an ice cream. I, I don't know. Can I spoil this? <gasps> no. I, don't, I, won't, I, won't get, I won't get into it. There's a... He said, I got a thumbs up. <laughs> Go for it. I'm good? Yeah, I got it. Okay. At the, at the end of the game, there's an ice cream social, and uh, all of our characters kind of enjoying some ice cream together. And so for the filming of this, I was... Um, it, w the final product looks like we're all together kind of, you know, enjoying ice cream and being, you know, having some camaraderie together. And the filming was I was alone <laughs> on a set with, like, huge lights in my face just slopping down a whole pint of haagen -Dazs, and Jack wouldn't let me stop. You got haagen -Dazs? Oh, I got haagen What'd you get? Soy cream? <laughs> <laughs> that was for budget pushing. cuts. I was pushing for that. I tried to address yeah. everybody's dietary concerns, mm -hmm. so yeah. See, that was, that was, uh, that was probably the, the most I've pushed myself as an actor. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not talking about being lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> pushing. <laughs> yes, Plotnik. Testing. Okay. This is the adult crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in time. I, I think there was a moment where there was a certain word I was supposed to say. Yeah, I believe it's bogeys. I don't think I've ever heard of that word before filming this. I could not stop calling it bogeys. So I said, Boogie's incoming. Boogie's there. Boogie, boogie, boogie. I was, I'm right. In my head, I was correct until Jack had to stop me and explain. <laughs> it's, it's boogie, boogies? 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 I, I, I still don't know the right pronunciation. But I think there was a solid 15 minutes of just laughter of me unable to pronounce this word correct. So that is probably the a fun, a fun fact I would like to share. Yeah, let's have this look over here. Yeah, so that's a fun little moment. Um, I'm gonna, boy, yeah, I'm, I'm a very erratic brain. The rats kind of run around. Um, <laughs> I do, I, I think it's so important um, because we, he we heard it a little bit early on, and I get it, but there were people like, well, why isn't the game all in black and white? Or why doesn't it look like this? And why doesn't it look like this? And I, I take full responsibility for that. Um, we've done, we did other experiments that are pretty interesting, and you can talk to me in the booth. Um, but uh, the reason the characters are the way they are, the environment is the way they are, and like, wait, what is that music from? Um, is the mind and the vision, the combined mind and vision of our designers, that, that this would not happen. None of this would have happened if it weren't for this, this ridiculous 
box that has a tank turret on the top. And, and I'd really like to hear a, a, a round of applause for uh, pinball designers Dennis Nordman and, and his partner Paul, Paul Reno, Reno. For, for making Galactic Tank Force. You guys stand up, come on, stand up. Stand up. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, there's, yes, yeah, yeah. And, and they, gave us, they gave us the flexibility to um, have a young guy come in who played this character perfectly, and I said, no, fuck no, don't cut your hair. And, and, <laughs> and we, could, we could do things like that, and uh, the characters are who they are in this parallel universe. So, so guys, thank you very much again for that. I have a little rebuttal to that you just said. We could do whatever we want. I had a zipper on my costume, and he made me zip it all the way up to my neck and then tie it. And I'm like, Jack, come on. I pay a lot of money for these. Can I show them off a little? And he's like, no, no, this is a family ping ball game. So, no, you didn't do everything that you wanted to do. If it was still being made in the 90s, it would have been down. But if we're in 2023, it's got to be up. So yeah, yeah. It's like the miniskirt. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down, depending on fashion. So, so, if, so if people do have burning questions, and my god, I, this is the time. Because um, I don't know when we're going to have everybody assemble together. So right. if anybody oh. has any questions or... Uh, We're doing a GoFundMe right now. You guys can <laughs> you guys will give you a link. I think, I, I think if you liked what you saw in uh, Mitch's performance, I think you can look forward to more. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, yeah. Was there yes. always ice cream about um, the beginning? Uh, Dennis and Paul, again, did this amazing inspiring cabinet um, that I, honestly, I had seen a couple years earlier, but then when Dennis physically brought the game into work, it, it just blew all our minds and we really enjoyed the potential fun of it. So what I saw on it was the planet you see in the back wall, right, and then the tank, and then um, there was a UFO with a cow hanging from it. I saw the planet in the back, I'm like, okay, we're not on Earth, because that looks like a Saturn type pattern planet. So maybe, but it's pretty close. All right, maybe this is the logic, and I know it make, maybe makes no sense, but, but bear with me. So, so I figure, okay, the play field is the surface of a, a lunar surface. It's a moon orbiting that planet. So I started with that. Why is there a cow on it? Why would you have a cow on a moon? And I just thought maybe it's a research base. And why have cow, like the ultimate, come on. The ultimate outcome of dairy products. Is there anybody who would argue, you can argue with me, but I, you're gonna lose. The <laughs> ultimate dairy product is ice cream. Cheese. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, wait, now we have a few people from north of the border here. I'm just gonna yeah, say. Yeah, 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 um, Sheboygan. Uh, you, you Packers fans might not understand me, but, but, uh, <laughs> but so, so, so I went with ice cream and, and we just thought it was fun and it kind of added to the absurdity. And bear with me again, I th uh, boy, I'm going to get a little deep here. Knowing this kind of the potential state of the world, we were thinking about that then. It's like we could make this tank game, and God knows what's going to happen oh, in yeah. the next six months. And here we go again, right? And we thought, you know, this ice cream thing is absurd, and it's silly, and it's stupid. So it made for um, a wonderful diversion, and I think it made for the kind of humor that we came up with. So, so that's the logic behind the cows. Yeah. And, and, and to follow that up a little bit more, Jack, we, we started talking to some of the distributors and uh, some of the countries in Germany were like, you're building a tank. You know, there was a lot of questions about tank. And then when I explained it's, you know, saving ice cream and doing cows and all this other stuff. And well, Plotnik is actually trying to come up with a formula for the zero gravity ice cream because it has no calories. You can eat it and never get fat. So he was trying to solve, instead of people solving world peace and cancer, he's solving everybody getting fat by eating ice cream. So, yes, sir. question. Absolutely. Thank you. 
you. There you go. You. you got it. Thank you. Full circle. <laughs> Full circle. We have our next speaker of the house yeah, right well, there. Yeah. <laughs> right there. He said, Sir, he said. please. Uh, 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 I defer to the representative from the third row. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, so I understand something. Yeah, questions for more actors, but I'm just going to throw this out there, too. Think about it. We did an industry first here, right? We went out and filmed a movie and put it into a pinball machine. We actually started this out. There's 5,000 video clips in Galactic Tank Force. There's more video clips in that than most other pinball machines have oh. when they're an IP. I just have a question. Sure. Of those 5,000 clips, how many are in the game right now? Oh, Casey Butler, you're getting called out. You're the programmer. Or Joe Schober, you also are the programmer. How many are we up to, guys? I know right now it's 16 gigs to download all the files to put into the game. So it is quite a big uh, file. We don't, they don't know what the count is. They lost count after three, probably. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to double. No, it's okay. Following up on what you just said, does that mean that you're going to, that there's a, a lot more content we can expect? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's a ton of lot more content. Um, there's a lot of surprises, too. And there's some cameos from some very surprised people that have been in this industry that pop in this game. Derek? Oh, good question. I, I think I can start with that. I'm uh, quite young. Pinball is a, something that I haven't really had a, a world in. Um, my dad's played it. My mom's played it. I, ha I think I've played maybe three pinball games in my life. So it was a very interesting experience to get an email about a new pinball game that I want to be in a pin, or he wants me to be in a pinball game. I wasn't quite sure how that would work. It was definitely a... How is this going to turn out? Well, what am I supposed to expect in this in this game? Um, but it was an absolute joy to work with American Pinball, and it was it was I was ecstatic throughout the whole week I was there. Um, so it was it was wonderful for me. I hope you all can say the same thing. <laughs> I love pinball. It's always what I play when I go to the arcades. I wasn't much of a gamer growing up, so it was always pinball for me. Um, it was the one thing that I could actually understand and and concentrate on and just sit there and play pinball. I just absolutely loved it. So when Jack asked me to do this, I was like, oh, so we're going to do what we did 25 years ago in a pinball game now. Yes. Okay. That'll be fun. <laughs> Ever since I was a young boy. <laughs> I knew it was going off the I rails. I played soon. the silver ball. No. Pinball was a babysitter. Like, my parents like going to the tavern on a Friday night and, hey, Jeff, here's some quarters, you know, scram. So, pinball was my babysitter. And now it's my lover. <laughs> <laughs> There's your headline. There, there you go. go. There's your headline. Cancel. Cancel. News Jack actually women. had to explain what pinball was to me when I started. Um, that's a joke. That didn't get a reaction. That was a joke. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I've, I've seen, I've, I know what pinball is. The, the thing about pinball. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wrong crowd, wrong crowd. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I haven't seen like, when when Jack pitched this to me, like the putting putting video in uh, the game and like having the interactive element, um, I I think I, I saw what it like what it was going to be from the beginning. So I was like I was on board. I was like okay, I know how it's going to like interact and how this is going to be. But when I, whenever I explain it to my friends and like try to tell them that I'm acting in a pinball game and trying to explain to them why I'm here this weekend, it, it's always uh, I always have to like tell them is that a pinball ringtone? Sorry. Yes, it is. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Somebody got the jackpot, yeah. I think. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought it was mine. But yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I've, 
like working on the game, I always kind of envisioned how it would look, and then finally getting to play it uh, just a couple months ago, and seeing how well it, it actually integrates the video elements, kind of work frictionlessly with the with the the physical like, you know, bopping the pinball around. It's just it's it kind of it's so much more immersive than just like a regular pinball game would be. So I'm I'm excited to excited to play it again. Um, I do want to say, you know, like, you know, we're throwing these numbers around and assets and whatnot. Um, again, it, it, none of this happens without a very dedicated, I might say intimate team uh, at American Pinball, uh, exceptional for the, for the amount of people we have working on this. And I uh, would like to thank Joe Schober on uh, programming and Casey Butler in back. I mean, come on, two, two guys programming two a guys. very complex game and then and then to say all this stuff kind of easily like okay and then we shot five thousand videos and then da, da, da. all of that footage has to get processed yep. all of those characters have to now uh, in live in an, a real environment of a tank or a or a lab or whatever uh, that is thanks to the to the computer graphics Bobby pay attention <laughs> he's <laughs> always that, looking that, at the door the, no this is the to Bobby and to Bobby just, Bobby Larissa Back there. And Jessica Durbala um, are responsible for all of the graphics Two of people. Galactic Tank Force. Two people. And you guys stand up. I can't yeah. I can't thank you Jessica, enough. Jessica, stand up. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, Jessica. Come on. I do have to admit, Jessica is a very tiny person. So, yeah. So, thank yeah, you. She, thank she, you for she Oh, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> but really, uh, just a, a great team. And, uh, yeah, and I can't... Uh, so grateful for everybody. And, 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 and let's not just for, you know, last night I heard Steve Ritchie go on about, uh, you know, Captain Fantastic and he railed off 50 people and 60 people and so forth. And, you know, we have two people doing animations. We have two people doing that. I have a star uh, mechanical engineer with Zofia Ryan over here. She's the only one that does this with us. I have I have a star by the name of Mitesh Pitva, who is my you know all around wiring guy who just puts the games together. I have an, a guy who's a, apprenticing under him, Benjamin. Um, but I also is 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 he here? He's here. Luke, where are you, Luke? Luke, there he is. Luke Underwood. He he was our intern this summer, and uh, Luke did an awful lot, and uh, he was uh, it was great to have him. Uh, at uh, AP to help us with Galactic, but understand this this is it This is a team. This is a very Small team and I have Steve Bowdenson back there. I see him back there He's trying to hide but he helped with some of the rules and and playing the game to death and going this doesn't work We got to change this um, Dennis and Paul thanks for your your creative design Dennis designed this game with tank treads that weighed 300 pounds a piece. Uh, I mean, it was like shipping two cabinets uh, with just that, which we caught, you know, got it smaller, thanks to Zofia. Um, but it was a small team. And then Jack, bringing on the cast of characters. There's, there's, there's uh, a kind of, kind of to not, I don't want to wrap up, but, but just kind of to put a bow on the whole ice cream concept. Um, oh boy, we are so fortunate. And I hope uh, you guys appreciate it, and please give him your appreciation and love. I can't believe how lucky we all are to have this man in our industry right now. Genuinely, the cabinet, oh, the cabinet, the graphics, the um, oh yes, the interpretation of all these people, yep, um, blew my mind every step of the way. And then I come to this show, and I'm like, oh my God, uh, the work I saw in Elton John. Um, I can't express how much. Um, I appreciate Chris Franchi and absolutely. And, and, and I'll tell you this right now: Chris Franchi did not have a, a spigot to turn off. The man kept shooting artwork to Jack, and he calls me up, goes, "How do I make him stop?" He's he, he's he. No, I was. I just. I, how do we pay for this? Is what I kept asking. No, I, I said just keep going. Don't worry about it. He'll forget. He we owe him money. So. <laughs> Ice cream. No, Chris is a good friend, and, and trust me, he yeah. just kept pouring out all this stuff. You guys will notice that he created an entire world where Captain Cayenne and Anoya were on the front of 
the TV book from the 1960s. He put them in Circus World for children's toys. He made it so believable that at the um, Vegas show, the AMOA show this spring, I had people from the Netherlands and over the seas go, this Galactic Tank Force TV show, was it in the 60s or 70s? It was never imported to us. Did they, you know, did, was it like one season? Was that it? How do you do that? I mean, we created something special, and it's put it in that, in that game. And, uh, you know, it, I want to give a round of applause, please, to the entire American Pinball staff, please. <laughs> yes. And, there, and there's one other guy, Mac Kern. He did all the music and, and made that possible, right? He took all those, all those video clips. I mean, Matt would call me up because, uh, really, you have 500 of somebody saying extra ball in a, in a crowded chamber trying to get it to so it doesn't echo? I mean, the poor man, I think it, th he's still not returning my phone calls, by the way, but, you know. He did it. He yeah, stood and, up. And, yeah, and Chris, you know what a pain I can be. So I would, <laughs> I would make these CDs. You know, the, back in the day, CDs. But he, this is this type of theme, and this is the type of theme. And my God, he he just nailed it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he absolutely yeah. nailed it. And Go by ahead. the way, Chris, congratulations, partner. Yes, congratulations. Yes, they have, haven't they? And I remind any, any visitors, marijuana is legal in the state of Illinois now. <laughs> Please check your local dispensaries. All right, any other questions for the team? So I'm just going to put the last pitch here, guys. Go out and play it. Enjoy it. Immerse yourself. Listen to it. You're probably going to find yourself laughing. And, uh, you know, Kenny Fedesna said it the best for me. I feel like a middle school principal trying to keep all these kids in line but it's the funnest job I've ever had to do so yeah well you mentioned and well I'm sorry I, I can't let that go <laughs> you mentioned an important uh, roots to the tree here and I know plenty of guys in this room and and friends and family and people that know we are so um, blessed to have Ken Fedesna with us tonight who was our leader our, our, our boss our, our inspiration at Midway Games, Midway Valley, Midway, for so many years. And, and that's where all this madness comes from. And uh, please, if you see Ken Fedesna right there, the guy that looks like Santa Claus without a beard, please, please uh, shake his hand. Yeah. Absolutely, please. Okay. And I have an exclusive. I have an exclusive. There will be a Professor Plotnik air hockey game. <laughs> I <laughs> can't finish it. Nice one, Carrie. <laughs> I kid. No, let, let's just remind everybody, tomorrow at noon to 3 o'clock, our cast will be in full garb, uh, full costume at the American Pinball booth, signing autographs, yeah. being here. I would love to have you get pictures with your favorite character from Galactic Tank Force, and we're so happy to have them here. Some from Chicago and the other one from Se Seattle. So it the was so good. The other one? No, it was Make great. Make them feel bad. I know, you know, and share pictures with them as well. Yeah, yeah, Please. yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be fully zipped down. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, folks, thank you very much.